Or would we be in agreement that it seems like their biggest need is like another shot creator type, not even just strictly a backup point guard, but like another shot creator type for this roster? And would you expect them to, regardless of what assets they're going to put on the table, make some sort of a move, whether it's the buyout market, trying to cobble together enough ancillary assets to to add that player? I know a lot of that's dependent on well, what do they look like during the regular season, but we've also seen how they've struggled in past years during the playoffs. And you are sort of at a, I would say, a secondary deficit in that department. Yeah. You're going outside the starting lineup. Would you expect them to at least do something like that, even if it's not the bigger swing? I know Bucks fans, you told me, were obsessed with Jordan Clarkson. At one yeah. Point. yeah. Um, you know, it's funny. I, I think they probably will. I don't think it's for sure. And I think one of my takeaways from this last postseason run was – like Ingles was actually a very good offensive backup point guard for them. Like moved the ball really well. Had a great pick and roll with Brook pick and roll with Brook Lopez. But you get to the playoffs and you have Giannis and you have Drew Holiday and you have Chris Middleton. He didn't touch the ball much. Like when he played, like he was kind of just a floor spacer, and it was frustrating. But also, I was kind of like, I mean, how much can you really tell those three guys? Like you're just going to be off ball when you're on the court for X number of playoff minutes. Because we have Joe Ingles. And I, I do wonder, I think that's the hard part with adding another perimeter player. Regular season, yeah, sure, you can't get enough. I think they, they'll miss it. And maybe that's where we'll see someone like even Lindell get some run. But it's hard to slot in a role player, ball handler, on a team that really has three, to some extent, ball handlers. I mean, Drew Holiday is their point guard for as much as, you know, the decision making and everything. Like, he's going to handle the ball. He's had 10 assist games in the playoffs. Chris is their best pick and roll initiator. You know, you try telling Giannis Antetokounmpo he's not going to handle the ball at all either. There is only so much other, and I think it's hard for a guy to come in and just like be prove that he deserves to be on the ball. Unless you're like, you know, could you find a? He's obviously gone and too expensive. But you know, if Chris Paul comes in, that's a different story. If if you find hey, Mike Conley, never know. <laughs> that would be. And Bucks fans have been flirting with that one since pre-Drew. I mean, that was that was the only thing we thought we could do before. No one thought Drew Holiday was going to be on the way there. Um, and probably would have worked out well for a couple of years there. Uh, but I would be down for that as well if he wants to show up. But I, I think it would have to be someone like that who's more of an established point guard versus just like, you know, a, a good initiator. I just want – I would worry they would just lose their role in the playoffs again, which I think makes some sense. But then it's like, well, what was the acquisition for? Are we really doing this for the regular season? Is it worth it? Or, you know, do we just give the rookies and Lindell Wigginton the ball more? Marjan, you're a point guard today. Figure it out. We don't, <laughs> we don't care. You know, we're, we're playing. Uh, who can I, who's really not? We're playing Washington. Like, we don't care at all. It's like, go. we're going to win anyway, probably. Go see what you can do. Maybe not an in-season tournament game. That's a different story. But, um, yeah, I don't know. So that's what I grapple with, right, is like if you're not bringing in a – Let's say, like, not even starter, but like a, a top rotational guy, like where Bobby Portis is at, but as a point guard. If it's not that level of player, I do wonder, like, is it, is it worthwhile? Do you really need it for the playoffs or not? What do you think about it? I want your take on this because it's a weird, it's a, it's a, it's a weird idea, I think. You, you stole my vibe a little bit. You didn't steal it. We're just on the same wavelength here. Is If you're not, and that's what makes the conversation about would they give up the first round pick and what I was going to get into, I would say... They're at a similar point. I mean, other teams are here, but a good analog is the Knicks right now. The Bucs are way better than the Knicks. I want to make that clear. But everyone's talking about like, oh, the Knicks could do this. They could do that. It's like any move you make at this point needs to be someone that it can be added to your closing lineup. Or I think you had the great way of framing it. I was going to say your sixth best player is, can it be on the level of Bobby Portis? Where, okay, he's not in your most important closing units, but like, you know, he's going to play enough minutes to matter. And the Bucs are in that same situation where they might, they have kind of a, oh, well, like we have that fifth spot on the perimeter open in the, the closing lineup. Like, okay, you need to be better than whoever you have. It's not just a matter of, well, let's go get this player who maybe they're even better than Grayson Allen or Pat Connaughton, but you can't play them defensively in crunch time or they're two on the ball. Like I would argue, like, could you play? Let's say you were able to get Jordan Clarkson. Um, like, could you play him in your closing unit? I guess in theory, sure. You probably like, should. You're a lot of Middleton because Drew Holiday is already handling all he can. And it's like, that's just going to trickle down onto your three effect. And that's where their bucks are at, which makes it so difficult is that any move, they don't have necessarily the assets right now to do it, but they need to make, if they're going to make a move, a meaningful move, it has to be more higher end than mid end. And that's where yeah. I think people, 
I compare them to Knicks because when people were talking about their offseason and some people were underwhelmed by them getting Dante DiVincenzo, you needed to get someone. Your biggest need is shooting that for the Knicks that cracks your closing lineup. And for the Bucks, it's that fifth guy who can be in our closing lineup. The bar for that, because you're already so good, yeah. is incredibly high. And when you know Brooke, Giannis, Drew, and Middleton are just going to play a crap ton of minutes in the playoffs anyway, the bar becomes even higher for that. And so I think yeah. that's the issue given their, you know, a team like the Knicks, they have more assets to give up and go out and get. And also their baseline of talent is lower as the collective. Yeah. But when you don't have these assets, you almost need to, you mentioned this, wait, and as more of these first round picks open up that you can trade, that makes it easier to get what you need as ass backwards as that might sound of knowing the immediacy that you need to approach the Giannis window with. But it's, yeah, but it, it is a funny like paradox because like, it's a good problem to have. I would put it like they have a depth chart hole, but they don't have a roster hole. If you just stack up and look at like, these are our nine most talented players. I don't think anyone would look at that group, a skill set aside and go, oh, they need to add to that. Like I think their top nine is really good. So it's it's difficult. Like I, I don't think you should go get a uh, let's say Delon Wright, a fine a fine backup point guard, right? I don't think you should go get a Delon Wright and then go, well, you know, Pat, you're not playing as much tonight because we went and got Delon Wright. I'm not I, I'm not specifically saying Delon Wright is way worse than Pat Connaughton or whatever, but just to make the point of like you shouldn't push better players down in the rotation just to fill that hole, which skill set wise may not matter that much anyway, given what some other players on the roster can do, and that's why it is like. Everyone wants to trade Grayson on Bucks Twitter now. I think it's really hard to trade Grayson and get better. Like, I don't see the one-to-one -one trade for a team. It's just like, yeah, we're going to give you another player in their late 20s who's just better for some reason, and you don't have to give us up much. And they make the same amount somehow, which Grayson makes like $9 million, which is not a lot. You know, everyone wanted Colin Sexton. It's like, okay, even putting aside the whole, the whole Colin Sexton as a player thing. You got to give up two rotational players and probably picks because it's Danny Ainge. Is that on its <laughs> face even worth it? Like seriously, that's that. I mean, you're not getting them for two players. The Jazz are not doing that unless it's Giannis and Chris or something. The, and that's the thing too is just like the, they're only built to like you're gonna trade for salary matching purposes. Like you're gonna end up trading one of your top seven or eight players. You have and to. hey, spoiler alert, it's not gonna be one of your top three. Yeah, like, it's, or it's four not be Drew, really. Or Middleton, it's not gonna be one of your top four. Yeah. And so, like, it needs, and if you're going to give up two of them, and so it's like, yeah. I got into this when I was like, yo, who'd make a lot of sense for this roster? Tyus Jones. Yeah. But then you get into the conversation of Tyus Jones can't close for you. I, don't, I mean, like, maybe he could, like, Tyus and Drew and Middleton and Giannis and Brooke. It'd but be matchup like, dependent at best. Right. It'd be matchup dependent. And then, okay, fine. Like, that's fine. You could fall back on Connaughton or Grayson in that respect. It's like, well, no, you're going to have to trade maybe one or both those guys to get Tyus Jones. Yeah. And that's, that's just the it's it's a good problem to have, but I think people lose the plot of the bar for the Bucks to make a trade is just so high for someone who's going to be again their sixth best player, and it has to be not just our it has to be our sixth best player not because we traded our sixth best player to get him, but because they were going to be better than that sixth best player to begin with. Where it's like if you're going right. to trade Bobby Portis or Pat Connaughton, whatever, like okay, it's not just this person's kind of a better fit. Like, no, this person needs to be better than those guys too. Yeah. I mean, cause you are, you are always needing to contend that year in addition to the, the looking forward stuff. And it's like, you know, there were some teams, like it felt like Detroit got Monty Morris super easily and there were Bucks fans yeah, like, I, Oh, we could have done. It, I mean, they did. The they did. I didn't like was like, well, how did they only get that second yeah. for Monte Morris? But please. But, but like the Bucks again, like maybe that's still a worthwhile deal to do. Like I'm not legislating that, but the Pistons didn't have to think. I don't even remember who they sent. It was salary. Like they, they just, they had salary that they could send. The Bucks they don't. didn't send salary. It was just an account. Oh, they just took him. They yeah, they just pick. took him. So that that's even more. But like some of these trades where it's um, John Collins, the, the Bucks reportedly sift around John Collins. Of course they did, as you say infinitely scalable player would have been a great fit on the box <laughs> but guess what the jazz i think did send back something for him if i remember maybe they had the Rudy Gay. Game. it was Rudy they got a, yeah the bucks don't have that equivalent of like here's seven million dollars that we just like you know no offense to Rudy Gay. that just doesn't we're not worried about losing that player like they don't also, have the equivalent even if you did let's just say you had let's say you had let's just say you had a throwaway player on a seven million dollar contract making seven million dollars as like Rudy Gay is making six million dollars like yeah yeah wave. so that's sort of their issue